My name is Tom Wiedemann, and I am the Executive Director of the International Motor Racing Research Center at Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen is a small town in upstate New York of 2,000 people. It is famous for much more than its deep lake and gorgeous gorges. How did Watkins Glen impact the racing world in America? From World War II, uh, Watkins Glen has been road racing in America. It was the first road race post-World War II uh, to be held here. Cameron Argensinger, young Cornell graduate, organized the first road race here at Watkins Glen. It started out by the courthouse, wandered up through the hills and back down into town. It started as sort of a community event and became an international sensation. idea to them because I had a car and I wanted to race in a road race and there weren't any such things in this country. They had a number of people of, a great, of, of much vision and it caught on in a manner that was unbelievable, but I'll never forget it. You know, I look at, at, at the photographs from those early days and I see these stern looking community leaders and mayors and council members and all, and there's this kid in the picture. And this kid is Cameron Argetsinger, who just created this concept, sold this concept so well that, you know, it became a, not a question of, well, why, but it became a question of, well, why not? Uh, it has to be a very high point in, the, in my life. There were quite a number of people, a surprising number of people. I think the police estimated there were perhaps 10,000. How unsafe were these first early races on public streets of Watkins Glen? Uh, these were crazy people. <laughs> Trees, big rocks, uh, you name it, narrow, narrow, regular pavement. So trying to go fast on stuff like that, one mistake, you're all done. It was a thrill of the race. And in racing, you're always pushing the edge. Uh, you're not going to win a race by being cautious and holding back. So you're always on the edge, and uh, sometimes that, that edge... ...gets precipitous and you go over the edge. And there have been uh, a number of very tragic accidents here in Watkins Glen where drivers have lost their lives, uh, an occasional accident um, along the route through the village early on where pedestrians were injured, uh, well, unfortunately, in 1952, there was an accident where uh, there was a fatality, and uh, it just was something we're not used to today. The cars were right downtown on Franklin Street, and uh, two cars uh, touched a person, and unfortunately, it cost the person's life. 1952, it was Fred Wacker was the name of the man who unfortunately hit the last pedestrian in Yes, public races. Yes. And no one likes to have their name associated with something like that. Well, very unfortunate. If there's going to be a name to be associated with it, I think Wacker is pretty fitting. Oh, okay, we're going to leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> if racing is going to continue, it can't continue with uh, a history or, or an aura about it of danger to pedestrians, danger to spectators, danger to drivers. So you mentioned that it's gotten safer. Would there be a Watkins Glen International if it was not for these early races? Likely not. Watkins Glen created the phenomenon of world racing in America. It became a regional and then a national and now an international sensation. Well, that's the Cameron Argensinger uh, stand, uh, grandstand, that is about the biggest one here at the track. So I think that's very fitting. So when you're partying at the races this summer, take a moment to remember how it all got started.